Hey, future badass business owners, welcome back to the Start a Local Small Business, where each episode we're going to walk you through getting your small business from concept to open for business. In today's episode, I want to talk about the negative side to being a small business owner. Listen, nobody said being a small business owner was always going to be sexy and fun in a bed of roses. Now, don't get me wrong. It will not always be doom and gloom. But as you saw from the 13 questions when you answered it, there's, it's not going to be an easy road either. So let's take a few minutes to expand on a few of the areas that I want to make sure that you're really prepared for. Because here's the thing, by the end of the series, I want you to be able to determine if this new adventure is for you. I want you to go to into it with your eyes wide open into the thrill of the roller coaster ride that having a business can be. While there's a lot of potential to earn a great living and being your own boss, there are also a lot of pitfalls as well. The less glamorous side of being a small business owner, if you will. You're going to work really hard, and I mean really hard. You're going to have some pretty long days, weeks, months. You're going to have people love you, and you're going to have people hate you. You're going to have people that are loving on you, and then people that are just yelling at you and screaming at you. You will constantly be worrying if you're doing the right things, if you're doing enough, how you're going to get the next sale, and will you make enough money. It doesn't always have to be that way, but in the beginning, it absolutely is. And by the way, even if you blow the doors off, you're going to love all the sales, but then you're going to be asking yourself, where's all my money going? Because you're going to have all of these sales, but because you never really understood your business numbers, you're not going to know where that money is going. So you're going to have to constantly be asking yourself, how can I be better at what it is that you do? Because pretty soon you're going to realize that you're working so many hours, you're making so much money from a sales standpoint, but you're not making any profits. You're going to start thinking, hell, I can make more money working for someone else than what I'm doing right now. And all these hours that I'm putting in, it's absolutely ridiculous. So it's, it's going to be an emotional roller coaster. And while some of you will be profitable out the gate, you're still going to struggle job to job in the very beginning. I want to make sure that you guys become lifelong learners from the get-go on how to be a better business person. You need to learn those business learners and you need to study the art of being the CEO of your own company. Remember, you have a business owner hat and you have an employee hat and way too many people wear their employee hat and not the business owner hat. We're going to talk about that more in an upcoming episode. Because what's going to happen is you're going to spend a full day out in the field working your butt off, working all these hours, and you're going to come home. And guess what? You're still going to have to call people back. You're going to have people that have been wanting to speak to you. You're going to have to grab the phone. You're going to have to listen to people. You're going to have to write up bids. You're going to have to do your bookkeeping. Your work day doesn't end the minute you stop doing the doing. And it's important that you understand and your family understands that while you're getting this business up and running and for a while that you are going to be home, but you're still going to be working on the business. And that really messes people up because when they come home, they're tired. They just want to put their feet up. When you had a job, that's what you did, right? You came home and then you played with the kids, ate, watched some TV, played some games, whatever it was. Now you're going to come home and you're going to do more work because the business owner you is going to kick in as opposed to the employee you that was out in the field the entire day. And if you have employees, oh my gosh, it's going to be so hard for you to find good help. Some markets are easy to find help. Other markets are hard. And as the time goes on, it's getting harder and harder to find good people. And you're going to have to kiss a lot of frogs in order to get the right people for your business. Most business owners are lucky if they find that one great diamond that works in their business. But most of the people that you're going to hire are going to be there only for the paycheck. And by the way, one of the hardest transitions for most small business owners is when they do start hiring people because it's way easier for them to jump in and fix the problems versus stopping and teaching their people how to fix the problems and learn how to do things. Because after all, it's your livelihood. So you want to make sure that you jump in and you handle it. And you cannot do that when you became, become a business owner. You're going to have to learn how to grow and develop people. So if you don't like people and you don't want to have a team, that's something to keep in mind as you go and build your business is how can I make this the most profitable business I can knowing I'm never going to hire employees. So I'm not saying you have to hire employees, but you have to ask yourself, how much money does the business need to be making in order for you not to take that leap? Because for many people, the only way that you're going to be able to grow and scale the business in order for you to make the money you need, there, there's going to be a necessary evil at some point with employees, depending upon what that number is. In our last episode, I talked about the fact that you're going to have some rude customers and folks that are going to treat you like your hired help, if you will. And in a way, you are hired help. They're paying you to do whatever it is that you do. So you need to get past that because that's how they are going to see you. 
Now, as a small business owner, you get to pick a little bit more about well, who you choose to help and who you choose not to help. But in the very beginning, a lot of times people don't have those choices and you're going to take jobs that you probably normally would not want to take in the future. The great thing is once you get that business up and running and you get a really good solid foundation, you can say no to some of those customers that you're going to say yes to in those early days. And you're going to find people that are just perfectionists. No matter what you do, it's never going to be right. And they're going to continue to want the lowest price out of you, but then they're going to turn around and try to take all of your money. You need to be prepared to navigate the waters of those picky people. Now, here's the good side. It might be maybe 5% of the customers that you run into are going to be like this. I don't want you to think that they're all going to be like this because they're just not. But what happens is it's way too easy to focus on this 5% versus the 95% that are going to be amazing customers that you're going to work with. I need to make sure that you don't focus all your attention on the loud, obnoxious ones out there, but focus on the majority of your clients that are going to be amazing and wonderful. Because if you do a great job doing what it is that they hired you for, they're going to be thankful and grateful, and they're going to be loving the fact that you're giving great customer service and the quality that you promised them. Now, the biggest perk that people think about is being their own boss. Well, it's true that you get to set your own terms on your work and life balance. It won't always be easy. And yes, you will still have a boss that you need to answer to. He or she is going to be a jerk. People say all the time, the hardest boss you're ever going to have is you. You're going to be so hard on yourself. You will have internal fights all the time about what you want to do versus what your customers and your business needs you have. And let's talk about family. When you quit work to work for yourself, your family will think that they get to spend more time with you. The problem is you're going to need to be very disciplined as a small business owner. You absolutely can be there for those important moments in your kids' lives. However, it will mean that you will have to say no at times to work and to them. Because in order for you to go to some of those special moments, you're going to have to turn down other jobs or figure out how to work around them. I do a lot with and for my family, but I also work some crazy hours in order to be able to do that. And I could never go back to corporate America due to the flexibility I have as a small business owner. But I will tell you, sometimes I work some insane, crazy hours to get it all done. In the beginning, you're going to have a lot of distractions due to not having a full schedule of business to keep you on the straight and narrow. You will need to avoid the temptation to do things that don't drive your business. You will need to go to work each and every day. Sales are not going to fall into your lap. You need to grab the tiger by the tail and take ownership of your business and go work for it. And by the way, you are going to have times of fear. Where will the next sale come from and how am I going to pay my bills? This is the biggest reason you hear me discuss in our 13 questions episode about finances. When we run our businesses from a place of desperation, we make stupid choices. It is the biggest reason I challenge you to have some reserves in the bank. When you take on a job that your gut is telling you not to take, I will guarantee you it'll be a job that will cost you all of your profits. While it may sound good, if your gut's telling you that this is not a good decision, I promise you, you watch, you're not going to make any money off of that deal or you're not going to make anywhere near the amount of money that you thought you were going to make. And the only reason you probably took the job was because you needed the money. And the ironic thing is, it ended up making you no money. Now, don't get me wrong. Desperation can also motivate you. I personally get motivated when I need money. I have bills to pay and I want to pay my bills. I help support my family in all kinds of ways and I want them to have a good life. So trust me, I get it. You need to find a way to funnel that desperation into making the right choices. The key is finding the right balance between motivation and hunger. While times will be rough, being a small business owner in your community can also be very rewarding. People want to see you succeed. Remember, you're building a great business that not only benefits you, but also your neighbors. You will be solving their pain points and helping their daily lives by what it is that you have to offer, and they're going to want to see you succeed. Your new adventure is not going to be easy, but if you do it with your eyes wide open, it can definitely be one hell of a ride that you're going to really enjoy. All right, in our next episode, I'm going to dive into something that everybody always asks, how much money can you make in your new business? So make sure that you hop on over to that one.